Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my second uh, uh, recorded uh, discussion in the subject uh, uh, Specialized Crime Investigation 2 uh, with uh, simulation on uh, interrogation and uh, interview techniques. So uh, last time, I was able to discuss with you some of the important things to remember in the study of a CI2, no? such as uh, the concept, no? you have to review the concept, the uh, types of investigation, the aims of investigation, uh, the cardinal points in any criminal investigation, uh, the phases of investigation, and uh, one of the most important things to remember in fundamentals is uh, the tools, the tools of criminal investigation, or sometimes they call it the three eyes, no? Three eyes because there are three letter I in the Matayan. Three eyes of uh, investigation. These are the tools in the sense that uh, in any specialized crime investigation, uh, the investigator will have difficulty or to the point that he could not uh, accomplish the threefold aims of any criminal investigation if without the proper use of uh, the three tools of investigation. So do not forget that uh, because that is the foundation for you to more appreciate the subject matter, no? SCI 2. So also do not forget uh, the basic uh, criminal procedures or investigative procedures no? in criminal investigation, such as arrest, search and seizure, raid, inquest. These are basic criminal procedures that are undertaken in any criminal investigation so long as there is a violation of the criminal law. So, in this discussion, to make it simple, uh, I would like to discuss uh, the overview of the specific crimes, the specific crimes that you, know, you need to remember uh, in connection to uh, investigation. Because you have to remember that uh, uh, it will not be called crime investigation if there is no crime involved. So as investigator, one of the quality of a criminal investigator is the knowledge of criminal law, procedure, and evidence. Knowledge of law, criminal procedure, and evidence. So as part of the knowledge on uh, criminal law, I have cited in your notes the specific crimes punishable by criminal laws, no? such as the revised penal code and uh, some special penal laws. So this will be the topic in this discussion. No? Because when you start an investigation, you should have an initial assessment on what is the possible crime involved. So that that is your basis for you to continue and go further in your investigation. Now, so you should know, uh, you should know how to define a crime. No, you should know how to define a crime based on available and initial evidence uh, collected or gathered. So pag wala kayong alam sa batas kung ano ang isang krimen, when to say that the crime is murder, when to say that the crime is robbery, when to say that the crime is estafa, 
when to say that the crime is still theft. You no, know? so if you have no knowledge about it, then basically you have no starting point in your investigation. So that is the importance of uh, familiarizing these specific crimes defined under the revised uh, penal code and special penal laws. So as you see in this presentation, I will make it uh, brief and concise because you have your notes to further read the details. No? Uh, again, uh, I hope you have understand the importance of familiarizing the specific crimes punishable by the RPC and the special penal laws because before you conduct investigation, you have to uh, initially determine if there is a crime involved. And again, there are many kinds of crimes depending on its nature, depending on the law that defines it. Okay? So, I hope you are able to render that the reason of any criminal investigation is the occurrence of crimes, but every crime is unique as to its nature and elements. Therefore, as investigator, it is a must to first establish the possible crime committed based on available evidence gathered upon its discovery or reporting of such incident. And this shall be the initial basis of the whole processes of investigation. It is then the burden of investigators to prove the alleged crime through specific crime investigation, applying all available uh, techniques and resources that are uh, significant to the crime being investigated. So to remind you again, the crimes punishable under the revised penal code, sometimes crimes punishable by the revised penal code, they are called felony or felonies. So the crimes punishable by the revised penal code no, are classified accordingly. So first classification of crime under the revised penal code. What is the law that created the revised penal code? It is Act number 3815 as amended. So again, going back to the classification of crimes, we have crimes against the fundamental law of the state. What is the fundamental law of the state? It is the uh, Philippine Constitution. What is our Constitution? It is the 1987 Philippine Constitution. So these are directly, or these crimes directly affect the mandates of the Constitution. Number one, arbitrary detention that is committed uh, by a public officer. No? who will detain uh, a person beyond the regulatory period of detention of a person arrested without a warrant of arrest. We have the 12 hours, 18 hours, and 36 hours, depending on the uh, level of crime committed. For light offense, you can detain it for 12 hours, less grade for 18 and grade for 36 hours. Anyway, you will have a subject you know, on book two. You will go deeper and understand. But the most important for now in connection to our subject matter is you should be aware and familiar that there are several types of crimes that can be subjected to criminal investigation. So arbitrary detention, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, the brother of this for uh, if committed by a private individual is uh, illegal detention. If the offender is a public officer, then arbitrary. If the offender is the uh, private individual, then it is illegal detention. Violation of the rights of the person under custodial investigation, delaying release yeah, of prisoners, and expulsion, violation of domicile, itong expulsion, pag ikaw ay uh, uh, pinapaalis, no? uh, 
sa iyong uh, bahay or residence without any legal authority. Violation of domicile, kung biglang may papasok sa bahay mo na public officer, they did not ask permission, no? they entered your house secretly to obtain any evidence against you, then that is a violation of domicile. Ang kaibigan ang uh, uh, kapareho ng violation of domicile committed by any private individual, not a public officer, is uh, trespassing. No? So, pag private individual ang gumawa dyan, then that is trespassing. So what I am giving you now, ladies and gentlemen, these are just initial uh, overview of these uh, crimes. But if you will have your subject uh, book too, then you will go deeper uh, on this discussion. So search warrant maliciously obtained and abuse in the service of those legally obtained. So remember that warrant of arrest is a document order from the court. A search warrant also is an order from the court. Ang search warrant at warrant of arrest, hindi yan in the issue or hindi yan galing sa police, galing yan sa korte. Ina-applyan yan ng law enforcers like the PNP or the police officers. Ina-applyan ang warrant at saka search warrant. Then searching domicile without witness. So remember this, the law provides that when you conduct search with warrant, Na, then remember this, there should be witnesses. Prohibition, interruption, dissolution of peaceful meetings, crime against religious worship, crimes against public order, that is the next classification, rebellion, yeah, public order, because that creates uh, destruction of public order. Then it creates panic among the people. A rebellion, yeah. No, this is mostly committed by uh, uh, the group of people who wants to uh, uh, remove a sitting government. So coup d'etat, yeah. So coup d'etat, no. Uh, the same. Uh, this is a swift attack, no. Uh, you want to remove a sitting. Uh, uh, some only want to remove uh, the president. Yeah, that is a coup d'etat. Sedition and conspiracy commit the sedition, inciting to the sedition. Yeah, and pakibasa na lang yung mga yun. Illegal assemblies, direct assault, indirect assault. Yeah, itong direct at saka indirect, magkapatid yan. No? Yung, uh, ang victim dito is a public officer. No? So pag uh, uh, sinuntok mo o inatake mo no, in whatever manner ang isang public officer who is exercising his function, then that is uh, uh, direct assault, no? especially those person in authority. No? So example ng person in authority, the mayor, the barangay chairman, or punong barangay. Yeah. So... Pag ang inasolve mo naman is the person or agent of person in authority. No? Agent of person in authority. Like the police. Uh, the police is an agent of person in authority. Then that is indirect assault. No? Uh, resistance and serious disobedience, public disorders, and lawful use of means of publication, and lawful utterances, alarms, and scandals. Yeah, common yan. No, yung mga nanggugulo. Lasing, nanggugulo, or kahit hindi lasing, when it causes alarm and scandal to the peace of the people within an area, then that is alarms and scandal. Evasion of service of sentence. Yeah. Evasion. Pag may takas, that is a crime against public order. Isipin mo na lang kung may tumakas na uh, a prisoner rapist, then uh, it is walang order ang public because nagpapanik ang mga yan pagka ikaw ang susunod. So those are the crimes against public order, crimes against public interest. So it is for the interest of the public, falsification of documents. You see, it is a violation of public interest. Panlulong po yan, panlalamang, panggugulang. So pakibasa na lang yung mga yan. Usurpation of authority. Pag nagpanggap ka na ikaw ay isang polis, then that is usurpation, no? 
perjuri yan pag gumagawa ka ng oath no example ang salen mo or yung pdf mo personal data sheet at iba yung nilagay mo then pinirmahan mo under oath then you can be charged of perjury perjury ganun din when you testify in court and you are telling the court what is not true then that you will be charged of perjury okay then crimes relative to opium or dangerous drugs this is already punishable by a separate law or a special penal law known as Republic Act number 9165 then crimes against public morals gambling betting and yeah, public morals that's why gambling vices these are seen these are public morals no offenses against decency and those good customs crimes committed by public officers so dito ang mga crimes dito these are only committed by public officers public officers these are employed by the government these are government officers no yeah the reliction of duty direct bribery indirect bribery no yeah so pag ikaw ay tumanggap ng suhol uh, for you to do a favor to a person that, that is direct bribery uh, pag ikaw lang ay binigyan ng gift but uh, you are holding a position that may influence something or someone that, that is indirect bribery uh, ano naman ang kaso ng uh, uh, nagbibigay ng bribe or suhol it is uh, corruption of public officer corruption of public ito lang no itong banda na ito this is committed by the giver this is committed by the uh, receiver so yan yeah, anti graft and corrupt practices it is defined in a separate law that is republic act number 3019 3019 that is the anti graft and corrupt, corrupt practices act uh, pakibasa na lang yan no marami yan then itong crimes against person, ito yung mga common or traditional crimes that are happening and uh, encountered by our investigators, parasite. Uh, it is committed against you. It is killing, no? Yeah. Ang killing, maybe, ang, ang, ang crime na may killing dito is parasite, death or uh, physical injuries. Ito yung uh, itong death or physical injuries. Pag uh, ang batas kasi inaalaw. Uh, dahil sa kahihiyan, extraordinary na kahihiyan na binigay, uh, inaalaw ng batas na dahil sa bukso ng damdamin, it is reasonable na magawa ng taong ito. That's why, example, pag uh, naabutan mo yung asawa mo that they are actually having a sexual intercourse with another man who is not uh, his her husband, then you can kill them both. And uh, uh, the law says, they will not imprison you. No, they will just give you uh, is zero. No, ilayo ka sa lugar na pinangyarihan to avoid uh, uh, revenge from the victim's family. Then yung second jan is uh, uh, when a, your child, no, uh, a female child no who is under 18 years of age under your uh, care uh, had or have you actually uh, uh, witness no in your house no you surprise them that they are having sexual intercourse in your house uh, uh, pwede mong patayin ang anak mo uh, who is under 18 of age na nakita mo na nagkikipag-sex sa bahay ninyo. Ha? Because yan ang inaalaw. So these are death or physical injuries under exceptional circumstances. So itong murder, that is the highest form of killing. And it also bears the highest uh, penalty. No? Then homicide, yan yung simple, uh, sometimes simple and accidental killing of person. Then death cause of injuries inflicted in the tumultuous affray. Kung merong uh, rambol, yeah, tumultuous yan, no? 
um, may namatay then uh, the person is uh, is a victim of death cause of injuries inflicted in the tumultuous affray sometimes is ang rumble ang may kasalanan is yung nagbigay ng pinaka serious na injury that may cause his death then giving to assistance to suicide so remember this suicide is not a crime now it is a victimless crime it is not really a crime because it is a self destruction uh, legally speaking but morally speaking spiritually speaking suicide is uh, wrong no uh, remember this uh, uh, no man is an island no uh, you are not alone in this world if you have a big problem your neighbor may have the biggest problem or a bigger problem so there is no problem in this world that cannot be solved no uh, if you will share it to other people no uh, parang ano yan eh parang uh, reservoir yan pag napuno then magtapon ka ng konti but to destroy the reservoir then uh, uh, that will not help the problem so you are not helping yourself you are not helping your family and the society as an example if you commit suicide that is just a sign of weakness for you to escape the problem so what is punishable by law is not suicide but it is the giving of assistance so kung napatunayan na binigyan mo siya nang gamot para magpakamatay then you will be punished by law no pag sabi niyang itulak mo ako para ko mamatay kung ginawa mo then that is uh, uh, tantamount to a crime so be aware of that then also another killing here is infanticide no regardless of your relationship regardless of uh, your relationship with the victim no so long as the age is concerned that it should be less than 72 hours or less than three days old then if you kill that then that is tantamount to infanticide so do not forget that no itong infanticide yan homicide murder parricide these are common crimes involving killing but uh, the highest is murder so parricide when you kill uh, your spouse your ascendant or descendant especially your also your brother so do not forget that parricide so or a mother you kill your son that is parricide or daughter so if they will ask you when to say that the crime is parricide then basically vice versa Uh, the crime is parricide if it is not homicide it is not murder it is not infanticide so of course abortion is a crime uh, you know what is abortion that is not good no uh, because uh, that is prohibited by god and prohibited by the law of people no uh, life is not ours it is given then uh, homicide uh, generic investigation of course uh, that is just uh, the point of investigation you can remove that then challenging to a duel that is also a crime challenging to a duel ayan pag gusto niyo magduelo para sa mga pro boys mutilation ayan pag uh, uh, pinat mo yung uh, uh, ari ng isang tao especially sa lalaki that is mutilation hindi physical injury Uh, mutilation uh, then uh, uh, or pinutol mo ang uh, kamay yeah the commonly also organs or sexual organs no common yan sa mga nagseselos na babae yan may may nangyari na yan then also serious physical injuries there is no killing involved in here serious meron ding less serious yeah meron ding slight Uh, serious physical uh, slight uh, physical injuries okay then uh, as you see rape is considered a crime against person before kasi rape is considered a crime against chastity but because of republic act number 8353 no 
rape was reclassified as a crime against person. So do not forget that. And there is a new law today amending uh, Republic Act number 1853, that is number, uh, Republic Act number 11,648. Republic Act number 611,000. Republic Act number 11,648, that, that is the latest amendment of RA 8353, the anti rape law. No? Uh, you can read that also. So, ang rape noon, ang unang panahon, ang rape lamang is committed by virtue of a sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse. No? Uh, between a man and a woman. No? A man against a woman. But uh, today, because of RA 8353, rape is committed by sexual assault. So, assault. No, hindi kailangan sexual intercourse, it can be assault. So, when you insert your penis into another person's mouth, then with force, then that is rape. When you insert any object or instrument into another person's genital or anal orifice is considered rape. So do not forget that. Anyway, uh, you will learn them later. Okay, so do not forget. And rape also can be committed by a husband if you force your wife to have sexual intercourse. Then RA 8353 provides also the so-called statutory rape. No? When you had sexual intercourse with a person, sa bagong batas ngayon, uh, a person under uh, 13 years old. No, under 13 years old, ibig sabihin 12 years old, kahit wala pang force, binigay sa iyo ng kusa, there is mutual understanding and you have sex, you had a sexual intercourse, pwede kang kasuhan ng statutory rape. Hanggang 16 years old, no, including 13, 14, 15 years old, pag under 13, absolutely, talagang makakasuhan ka ng statutory rape. Pag 13, 14, 15, 16, under the new law, ah, pwede ka pa rin makasuhan. No? Pwede ka pa rin makasuhan, ah, especially if yung age gap ninyo, yung age gap ninyo is more than 3 years. Okay? So pag more than 3 years, ang gap ninyo sa 14 years old or 16 years old, then pwede kang makasuhan ng rape based from the new law that has just been signed by President Duterte. So yan ang crimes against person, crimes against liberty. So pag sinabing liberty is freedom of a person to move, freedom of a person to do whatever he wants to do. So kidnapping, so pinigil mo yung freedom ng tao and serious illegal intention. Ang hostage taking, pag ng hostage ka, ang kaso mo is serious illegal detention. Slight illegal detention, unlawful arrest. Yan. So when you conduct uh, arrest without warrant, you can be charged of unlawful arrest. Kidnapping and failure to return minor, inducing a minor is slavery, is also a crime. So do not forget that. Exploitation of child labor. Service rendered under compulsion and payment of debt. So, hindi pwedeng pangbayad. Uh, or pilitin mo ang tao para magtrabaho sa'yo because may mutang sa sa'yo. So, crimes against security. No? National security of uh, uh, or security. No? Uh, of especially persons uh, who are vulnerable members of the society like uh, children, uh, uh, senior citizens. No, but mostly children huh? and also other people. No, security in general. So, may biglang pumasok sa bahay mo, like trespassing privately. No, sabi ko kanina, pag public officer ang pumasok, that is violation of domicile. Pag private individual ang pumasok without authority, that is trespassing. So, ayan, ayan. No, qualified trespass, trade threats, light threats, yan. coercion, pinipilit ka, nagawin ng isang bagay, that is coercion. 
Ikaw ay tinatakot na patayin or any other relevant serious matters that, that is threat or threat to defense. So that is against security. Crimes against property. Ayan, alam nyo naman. This is against your property. Under the Constitution, everyone has the right to property. At pag ito ay ginalaw mo without your authority, then that is a crime. So commonly, yung robbery, between theft and robbery, yan, uh, robbery is higher in penalty. No? So robbery with force. Yan, ang isipin nyo. With force upon things. So pag sinira mo yung pintuan, sinira mo yung uh, bintana at pumasok ka ng kumuha ng bagay na hindi sa'yo, that is robbery. Ang theft kasi is, uh, uh, that is includes deceit. No? Yung mga pickpocket, yung mga nandudukot. Yan, mga, yan, it will uh, go to theft. No? Yung mga nag, uh, uh, yung mga ano sa shopping center, yung mga magnanakaw doon na pumukuha ng uh, shoplifter. No? You can be charged of theft. So usurpation, culpable insolvency, no? Uh, estafa. Yeah. Usurpation is uh, pag ino-occupy mo ang uh, pagmamayari ng iba, no? Yeah. Culpable insolvency. Estafa. Estafa, yan yung swindling, no? Bouncing of check is one, but it is defined under special law, BP-22, no? Stop, you know, uh, panluloko yan. Uh, making or drawing an issuance. Pag ikaw ay kumain sa isang restaurant, hindi ka nagbayad, you can be charged of stop. Panluloko yan. No? Uh, yeah. Bouncing of check, that is still stop. No? Hindi ko lang naalis yan. Altering the substance, quantity, or quality of things. Yan, yung mga nagbabawas. No? Pakibasa na lang yan. All right, then arson. Yeah, it's common yung arson. But arson is revised and punishable now under PD 16.13. That is the law amending, uh, law amending arson. No? Uh, arson, PD 16.13. Presidential decree. Then crime against chastity. No? The pureness, holiness of a person, especially women. Yeah. Adultery or pureness of action no holiness of action huh? there are things that uh, must be treated morally yeah so adultery commonly committed by a woman who will have a sexual uh, affair to other uh, men who is not who is not her husband concubinage committed by a man no pag nag-uwi ka na uh, uh, Ibang babae sa bahay nyo at binahay mo, that is concubinage. Acts of lasciviousness, yan yung mga nananansing. No? Yan, umahawak kung saan-saan. Acts of lasciviousness yan. Seduction, yan. Maraming sino dyan. Ha? You promise something, you deceive a woman just to have and uh, have sexual intercourse with her, but afterwards you did not comply with your promise. That is seduction. Dito, pag virgin ng iyong linoko, there is qualified seduction. White slave trade, yan yung mga nagbubugaw. Forcible abduction, yan yung uh, dahil ayaw sa'yo, ang ginawa mo sa tao, example, eh, tinanan mo, uh, o tinakbo mo, tinago mo. Yan. Ibang usapan sa kidnapping, kung merong demand, no? na uh, ransom. Ibang usapan yan. Okay. Also, the crimes against the civil status of persons, civil status, whether married, single, or any other civil status. Uh, simulation of births, yeah, panuloko sa birth mo, no? Usurpation of child status, bigami. Yang bigami na yan, having two marriages, kaya nga bigami, no? Pag nagpakasal ka ng dalawang beses at meron ka pang isa, that is bigamy. Magkaibang bigamy sa adultery. Premature marriage. Itong premature marriage, hindi na yan crime na yun. It has been decriminalized. 
no, hindi na crime ito. Itong premature marriage kasi is pinagbabawal ng batas ng isang byuda na babae ay mag-asawa within uh, if I'm not mistaken 301 days no hindi pwedeng uh, mag-asawa ang isang babaeng byuda within that days no pag nag-asawa ka within those days then that is premature marriage but ngayon sabi ko nga it is not anymore a crime it has been decriminalized kasi nga it is now many women are crying because they are saying that this law of the RPC is violating the right to the nasity and imasness. No? Bakit mo daw hihintay ng 301 days? No, that is a violation of the rights. That is why Congress decriminalized it. So do not forget that. Illegal marriage ceremony. No, sa mga, kasi ang authorized lang to conduct marriage ceremony is may specify sa batas. Pastor, minister, priest, Mayor, duly elected, and so forth and so on. Crime against honor, honor, pinag-usapan dito, integrity, paninirang, uri. Uh, we have libel, yeah, common yan. Slander, slander by deed, yeah, and so forth and so on. Then, lahat ng walang na define na crime sa RPC, makikita natin yan sa special laws. At ito yung assignment ninyo noon. And I hope you are able to identify their serial number, Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2002, that is RA9165. Illegal possession, meron na tayong maraming batas na, PD 1866, 9514, uh, 16. Then, uh, 1916, uh, now the public number 10591. Okay? All right. So those are the things that you have to remember, the specific uh, crimes. Then need to know about managing investigation. Investigation must be managed. We already discussed that. So we discussed ko lang ito for you to further understand para ma-appreciate nyo the importance of knowing and familiarizing specific crimes in relation to criminal investigation, in relation to the investigation of a specific or a specific crime. So do not forget that. Okay, so I hope uh, do not forget that and use this uh, simple material for your advantage, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, see you in my next discussion uh, and be safe always. Thank you and God bless us all.